In this video, I'm going to show you 10 incredibly useful PowerPoint add-ins for productivity. Starting with the first add-in called Emoji Keyboard. To install the add-in, you need to go to the Insert tab and click Get Add-ins. Just search for Emoji and the Emoji Keyboard appears right away. Click Add, Continue and the add-in appears under your Insert tab as a separate tool. The Emoji Keyboard is great because you have all the commonly known emojis available for use in PowerPoint and you do not have to spend hours googling for those emojis in proper quality. You have smileys and people, animals and nature, food and drinks, activity and so on. As well as you can change the skin tone for smileys and people. One of the greatest features in my opinion is the ability to choose if the emoji is inserted as a picture or a text file. If you want to insert an emoji as a picture, you can choose between different sizes. Just be aware that the smaller the picture gets, it becomes more pixelated. That's why I would always recommend inserting an emoji in L or larger and then decrease its size based on your preference. When in or decreasing the size of the emoji, make sure to press Shift or lock the aspect ratio by right click format picture and check the respective selection. Otherwise, you might run danger of ending up with skewed emojis. What I love about this add-in is that you can also insert the emojis as a text file. They look slightly different, but they are perfectly sharp and can be treated just as any other text in PowerPoint. You can increase or decrease their size by adjusting the font size, as well as duplicate them in one text box. This feature can come in handy if you want to use an emoji as a rating factor or the like. For example, when assessing a product and say product A got three thumbs up and product B five. Next up is an add-in called Pro Word Cloud. And even if it's called Pro, it's a completely free add-in. So imagine you have a list of words that you would like to visualize in a word cloud. You could do that manually by counting each word and then creating a word cloud based on the number of times the word appears in the list, such that the more often listed words are bigger than the less often mentioned ones. But as you can see, this is a very tedious process which is facilitated by the add-in. Just mark the list of words you have, choose the font type, colors and case, and click Create Word Cloud. By clicking on the display image, the word cloud is copied to your clipboard such that you can insert it on your slide. I really like the different font and color options that let you create a word cloud in so many different styles and formats to make it fit to almost every presentation. The next add-in is called Pexels and can be added just as the first one via the Insert and Get Add-ins button. Pexels is one of the biggest stock photo databases that has freely available pictures for everyone's use. The add-in has three main functionalities. First, you can just search for photos by typing in any keyword you would like, for example, city. Pressing enter, you will be given a number of pictures that you can scroll through. If you like one, just click on it and it will be inserted on your slide. Thereafter, you can resize, recolor or crop it based on your need. If you like a picture, you can also add it to your favorites by clicking on the small heart in the picture's lower left corner. Going back to the add-ins homepage, you can access your favorites in the top left corner. The greatest feature of this add-in, in my opinion, is the ability to search pictures by color. So for example, if you have a green themed presentation and you're looking for a suitable picture, you can set the color tone that you are looking for and click on the magnifier in the search bar. This will give you only those pictures with the selected color that perfectly matches your presentation. Finally, you can also search the most popular searches. But be aware that as long as you did not delete the color preference, this will be applied to your search. Now let's come to Draw.io, a very powerful PowerPoint add-in, completely free. Draw.io is very similar to Microsoft Visio that some of you might know, a tool to create all sorts of flowcharts, diagrams, network or organizational charts. Having added Draw.io to PowerPoint, you can either select OneDrive, Google Drive or your device to insert an existing file or you can choose to create a new file on OneDrive or Google Drive. Let's say you want to insert an existing file from your device, choose its location, 
click OK and you will see it in your add-in panel in PowerPoint. If you click Insert, the diagram is inserted as a PNG file on your slide and you can modify it based on your personal preferences. Now, if you would like to create a new diagram, just click on New and the Draw.io application will open in your browser. There you can again choose to create a new or open an existing diagram. Let's say we want to create a new one and you will see that you can choose from about a hundred predefined options. You could insert business or engineering charts, flow charts, maps, network charts, or whatever you are looking for. You can also start from scratch and open an empty diagram and create your own flowchart. Before you can start to draw, you are prompted to select the storage location and define a name and there you go. Once you are finished, you can go back to PowerPoint to the app overview and pick the diagram that we just created from your device location. Click on insert and there you have it again on your slide. The next add-in is called Icons by Noun Project. Some of you might know their website, The Noun Project, but this add-in is a great alternative. With the free version, you have access to 100 icons and with the premium version for $40 per year, you have access to hundreds or thousands of icons. And the great thing about the add-in is that you can choose the color of the icon as well as the size before adding it to your presentation with just one click. To be fair, the number of icons that you get for free is quite limited compared to PowerPoint's own icon library. However, if your work heavily depends on icons and you need them quite often to visualize information, it might make sense to pay the 40 bucks a year, especially if this might be paid by your employer. Now let's look at an add-in called Symbols and Characters. As the name already says, the add-in allows you to search for symbols such as stars, circles or currencies, as well as languages. Either you type in a specific character that you are looking for or just use the common search terms on the homepage. For example, searching for circles gives you a broad selection of different sizes and shapes. I like circles or stars to assess certain criteria or dimensions. So let's say you need to assess a website by its user experience, the color scheme or ease of navigation. You could do that by giving away stars and color them differently. For example, website A would get 3 out of 5 stars when it comes to user experience, 4 out of 5 for the color scheme and 2 out of 5 for ease of navigation. Pixton Comic Characters is the next add-in that makes your life a lot easier, especially when you need to be a bit more creative. The add-in allows you to create your own customized comic character just by clicking through five steps that you're guided through. Doing so, you can easily design characters, for example, for user manuals, brochures, or when creating customer personas. The great thing is that it provides you with so many different options and, for example, to show even one character in different poses such that you can quickly come up with the whole storyline. Another helpful add-in that I really love to use because it makes presentations so much more engaging and fun is Poll Everywhere. This is an app that allows you to integrate real-time polls in a PowerPoint presentation and that therefore gives the audience the ability to answer questions and vote directly for something on the spot in the meeting. Once you have added it to PowerPoint, you need to log in to set up a poll. By clicking the button, the login window is opened in your browser where you can simply log in with your Google account. Once that is done, you can see this overview on your PowerPoint slide. To create a new poll, you click on New Activity where you can choose from a variety of different polls, for example, multiple choice, word clouds, yes or no questions, open-ended questions, ranking, clickable images or others. So there's almost no type of question that you cannot ask with one of the Poll Everywhere questions. Let's say you want to include a multiple choice question. Click on this type of question and edit it. You can change the title of the question and the text of the answers by either just typing an answer or inserting a picture from your device as an answer possibility. By adding pictures, however, the slide might get a bit slow. In any case, you can also add or delete answer possibilities or reorder the options. 
Further down below, you can adjust the settings of the question. For example, if you would like to allow people to change their answer, allow unlimited answers per person or some other things. Once you're done, you can click save and the poll is ready to be used. Now, if you go into presentation mode, you will see the live results. So participants can vote either via a link or via a text message. And whilst people will vote, you will see the results in real time on your slide. The great thing about Poll Everywhere is that it's completely free with the basic features and you can include a number of polls in your presentation if you would like. Now imagine you are giving a talk or present something in your company with 25 people sitting in the audience, which is the maximum number of participants in the free plan. So it might be hard to tell everyone in that moment to go to that specific website and vote for the poll. But no worries, the next add-in will help you with that. I'm talking about a PowerPoint add-in called QR for Office. This add-in lets you create QR codes for websites, geolocations or email addresses that you can directly add to your presentation. For example, if you have just created a poll and now want to add a link to the poll website for people to vote, you can take the URL and paste it into the input field of the add-in. Choose the color and background of your QR code as well as the size and by clicking insert, you have generated the QR code to the website. Doing so with your Poll Everywhere link, people in the audience could just scan the QR code in the presentation and are directly forwarded to the website to vote. You could also use the add-in for example to link to your email or phone number at the end of a presentation. So in case someone takes a look at it and wants to contact you, they can just scan the QR code and get directly to your email address or telephone number. Finally, let's look at To-Do List Pro, one more useful PowerPoint add-in. This is a to-do list that is built in PowerPoint and therefore makes it very easy to keep an overview of the tasks that are still open in this PowerPoint. Especially when collaborating with others, this might be handy and complement the comment functionality in PowerPoint. Once added to your PowerPoint, the add-in is super easy to handle. First, you can enter the name of your to-do list and below you can add an unlimited number of items which are listed underneath each other. Once a to-do is complete, you can just tick the checkbox such that the item will be crossed out and is moved to the bottom of the list. If you want to delete one of the items, you can simply click on the red cross and it's disappearing. Now that you know the best PowerPoint add-ins, check out this video to learn how to create winning presentations.